Welcome to our next Greyhound TV quarantine interview. I'm John Williams here with another 2018 Gilman graduate, Mr. Max Costas. Max captained the baseball team while at Gilman and is now finishing up his sophomore year at Maryland where he plays baseball for the Terps. Great to have you here, Max. Nice to be here, man. Thanks for having me. Of course. All right. So let's get right into it. Your freshman year last season, you came onto the scene pretty quickly. You played in all 58 games. Have you here with 15 home runs, 49 RBIs? Um, you were all Big Ten. How were you able to adjust so well and so quickly to college baseball? I mean, I, I kind of took a lot of things I learned from Gilman into like college baseball. I remember um, having a so we had a I, I don't even know if y'all still do this, but European civilizations in tenth grade. Mm -hmm we learn a lot about like philosophies, like different philosophies, different ways of thinking in that class. And I feel like I, I attribute a lot of my success to that one class, because even though I don't remember much from that class, one of the things I remember is like learning like how to think and, le and being able to open my mind up to different ways of thinking. So I feel like when I got to college baseball, even though I struggled at first, I admit, I, man, it was hard. You know, the, the, the bigger time commitment, having to wake up at 5 a.m. to go lift at 6 and having like a five-hour practice at the end of the day, it was hard. But I feel like I was able to open my mind up to, to the, I guess, I guess I'll say I opened my mind up to being okay with failing because, you know, this is something new to me. And I think that I was able to open my mind up to being able to change things about my game that I've always done, being able to reinforce and relearn things that about my game that, you know, maybe I would, was doing wrong, but I could get away with it because I was just a good athlete. Hmm. And so I feel like when I was, the fact that I was able to like open my mind up to like different possibilities, open my mind up to different ways of seeing how the game can be played, different ways of how to succeed, I feel like I was able to take that all in and also like sort out what the best parts of it were for me. Because I, I can say that I learned, I learned a lot, like a ton of stuff my freshman year, but not all of it worked for me. So I was able to kind of like go through everything that I learned and, and pick the best pieces of it and kind of um, make an amalgamation of a game plan where that worked best for me and clearly I had success with it. That's actually, that's really impressive to hear. Um, and staying on the topic of mindset, uh, I was talking with Thomas about this a little bit in the last interview, but when you're stepping out onto the box and onto the field, I know you said that, uh, you're trying to open your mind up to different ways of thinking. How do you kind of adjust your way of thinking while you're on the field, especially considering baseball is such a superstitious sport to keep yourself focused and prepared when you're playing really tough games or different athletes so the funny thing i'm not really a superstitious person like i feel like i feel like the reason baseball is called a superstitious sport sport is because people are really really in depth with their routines and i i can see i can see why people would think it's superstitious now because i have i have a routine that i go about before doing every game that i i feel like i would feel off if i didn't do it you know what I'm saying? Like, I always have, like, the same – always have breakfast at the same time, always going and get stretched out, you know, listen to the same songs before every game day. And I feel like if I didn't do that, something would just be off. Like, I think one of the, one of the things I learned in my, um, in one of my psychology classes in college is that our minds really like routines. And once you get into a routine that works for you, when you don't do that, it, your, 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 your brain will tell something in your body's off. It's, it's the weirdest thing, but it's actually like, is that, that's something really interesting to look at. So I feel like the, when I have my, the routine that I have before any game is something that like calms me down and makes me realize that, you know, even though we might be playing like a really good team or, you know, this might be a really important game, like as long as I do that routine, I, I feel like I feel calm about myself. You know, it, it gets me back into the mindset that this is just another game. Like, this isn't this isn't the end all be all of the world right here. Absolutely. 
And going back to last season when you're, I assumed you probably even got more into this routine that you're talking about. What do you think your favorite part about last year was, whether it was just getting accustomed to college baseball or winning an award or a specific game? What, what was your favorite part? My favorite part by far was the, uh, the Big Ten tournament. That was, that was one of the coolest things I've ever been a part of because, because most of our games were, were scheduled in a way that we would have time off, like, after. And they had, like, a ton of, like, in Omaha, Omaha the, the, the town is basically centered around college baseball. So there was like a lot of cool things to go do around the town. And like, and like you, we all, all the teams stayed in the hotel. So they, we all stayed in the same hotel. So after our games, like we would all just be hanging out with each other. <laughs> like I remember, I remember like after, after one of our games, like me, a couple kids from Michigan, a couple kids from Minnesota, a couple kids from Iowa just went and like sat. So actually I'm going to tell this story. This is funny. So during, during one of the games that was on ESPN when um, I think uh, Nebraska and Ohio State were playing, there was like eight of us that were sitting out in center field because nobody was out there and we just wanted to chill, right? So, so in the middle of one of the innings, my, my mom called me and said that during the middle of the end, they panned out to all of us out there and were talking, were talking about all of us individually while they were in between innings. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I feel like that was so cool because like and like you know when Nebraska played that night, the whole like we got to play at um, TD Ameritrade where the College World Series is so. held. Mm -hmm. So Nebraska, oh, there was like like ten thousand Nebraska fans out there. Like it was the coolest thing ever. It was the coolest thing ever. Like the whole the, the whole center section behind the whole plate was filled. So I'll definitely say that playing in the Big Ten term was like easily the best part about college baseball about college baseball for me last year. So that was your favorite part. Is there a specific game that you had also in uh in the Big Ten where you guys maybe had a little upset or a comeback that was your favorite I would say so we we um we swept so the last season, the last series of the year we swept Iowa and we had to sweep Iowa to get into the Big Ten tournament and we swept them on senior day. I'm never, I'm never gonna forget that we we ended up we won like eleven to nine I think, and we we was it was nine nine going into the bottom of the the bottom of the ninth. My fault. It was nine nine going to the bottom of the eighth. I hit a lead off double, lead off double. One kid walked, and another kid hit a double to score both of us. Put up about eleven nine. We go on to win the game. We swept them on senior day. That probably that was probably like one of my most memorable games I had. I had I had like five hits in that game. <laughs> That's impressive. I mean, obviously you've been doing a great job in, in Maryland just from the stat line I read a few minutes ago. Getting back to the seniors this season, though, obviously I'm sure you guys were disappointed like every other team, but what do you think your goals were this year, whether it's for Maryland baseball or you specifically following your freshman campaign? Just elevate the game. You know, I I still felt like I had a lot of things to work on, even though I did so well last year. And I, I'm glad to say that I think I, like, found, like, I found some ways to elevate my game. Like, I ended the year, I ended this year, we played 20 games. I ended, I ended the 20 games hitting 432. I had 432. I was second in the nation on the on-base percentage, on percentage and second in the nation in quality at bat percentage. So I think, like, one of the things that really helped me was, becoming like having like a like a concrete and simple plan like like do you like people ask, like people ask me all the time like you know what do you think when you're hitting like what do you what is your plan when you go up to bat honest my honestly my plan is to swing at strikes and take balls that's literally it i'm i'm so, I'm so serious like that's that's all it is like you swing at strikes and you take balls and I feel like when I started doing that, because I can remember a lot of times, I can remember a lot of times last year when like, like I would swing at bad pitches and get out. Yeah, like I would, and I would get myself out. So I've tried to stop getting myself out this year. Like, like there's like, because there's going to be some times when a pitcher makes three really good pitches and you ground out. That's going to happen. That's baseball, bro. But like, I tried my best this year to stop getting myself out. 
And sometimes, and sometimes that means not swinging at strikes. Because sometimes a pitcher can throw a pitch that's a strike that you just can't hit. Like, you're not going to be able to hit that pitch well. It's, it's, so it's basically like just swinging at the pitches you should and taking the pitches you should. That's really it. I'm going to tell you, I love that message there. And that applies for every sport. I mean, I can definitely relate to that. Just keep it simple. Don't overthink when you're out there. I really like that message. Um, getting back to Gilman, when you were at Gilman, what do you think you miss the most about playing sports in general at Gilman? Man, just seeing my friends every day. Gilman, it, it, for people who know, Gilman's a really small school. Like, we're a really small school. So I would end up playing three sports, th all three seasons with the, with the same couple of kids. Like, me, like, like I, I play, I play, fo I play uh, football with Thomas. Thomas and Brandon Mass. I played my senior year with both of them. And then I would go on and play basketball with Mike Willis. And then I played bas baseball with Mike Willis and Joseph Malazzo. Like, all like, like, and I would see them every day too. Like, I would sit at lunch with all of them, talk with all of them. Like, they were my best friends. So I, I think that's definitely what I miss is like that together. I don't even know how to describe it. Like, like, I, I can, like, not even just, just taking sports away. Like, I just loved it at Gil. Like, that was really, like, like the best place ever. Like, I know, I know I sound so, like, I sound so, like, so, oh, everybody says that about their high school. But that, I really loved it there, man. Like, I loved my teachers. I loved my friends. Like, I, I enjoyed going to school there. I mean, just hearing you talk about earlier your world culture, or, sorry, your Euro Civ class and how that incorporated into baseball and just, all your friends playing different sports with you together. That that kind of highlights what you're just saying about how special Gilman is in that regard. Before we go, one important question to ask you. While we've been on quarantine, a lot of great shows have been out. What's been your favorite Netflix series that you've watched? Oh, over? oh, oh, man. So last Friday, Avatar The Last Airbender dropped on Netflix. <laughs> and I've been trying, I've been trying so hard not to binge watch this thing. <laughs> I, I've been limiting my stuff to one episode. I don't care what nobody say. Avatar The Last Airbender is the best TV show to ever bless a TV screen. Like, that show was amazing. It's better It's better the second time you watch it, like, when you're older. Because, like, when I was young, when I was, like, eight, when, I think I was, I was, like, seven or eight when it came out. I might have actually, I think I might have been, like, six when it came out. It was just cool that people were throwing fire around. That was just the coolest thing ever to me. But then, like, when I come back and, like, watch, actually, like, watch the show and, like, see, like, all, like, the themes that they talk about, like, they talk about, like, abuse. They talk about, like, genocide. Like, they talk about, like, PTSD and, and depression and stuff like that in the show. I'm just like, wow. Like, this show is really, really good. So, like, man, like, if anybody needs a TV show to watch out there, Go watch Avatar Last. Like, go bless yourself with this show. I'm serious, y'all. Like, like, um, one of the characters in the show, Zuko, he might have the best character arc of any character I've seen on a TV show. Like, that shit was that was ridiculous, man. It's like, if you need something to watch, go watch that show, bro. I was expecting you to say something like Tiger King or Waco, but I completely forgot how great Avatar was when that show was. <laughs> the best show ever, that. bro. The best show ever. Best show. All right, well, you heard the man. Go watch Avatar. Max, thank you so much for taking the time. I'm sure we'll be watching you next two seasons at Maryland and maybe someday in the pros soon. Thanks again, Max so, Costas. Man. No problem, man.